1990, 1989, I come to Pacific Press, you're there. The burden begins to hit me as we develop this book. I couldn't understand, as I said, the silence of the church. It just boggled my mind. I was convinced I had joined the right church, convinced, as I still am today, that the Seventh-day Adventist church is God's remnant on the face of the earth for all its flaws, but couldn't understand the silence. And I decided, you know something? David, since the church seems committed to silence, do it yourself. And so I took it upon myself to design an ad. At that time, let's put it in context, the religious right had just begun flexing its political muscle. You had Jerry Falwell making statements like, victory is not a matter of if, but when, for the church. You had Pat Robertson making the point that the church had enough votes to take over the country, and when the people said, we have had enough, we're going to take over. Let's really put it in context. That was the time period of Desmond Ford and uh, his deep-seated attacks on, on, on central uh, Adventist doctrines, which were biblical, but, but very well enunciated by Ellen White. And, and the subtext that he was pursuing that has borne fruit since was that we could not rely on Ellen White. And I believe that that's why there was a reticence at that time. Not official, the church will not change. I'm sure our church is not going to renounce uh, it, it's, it's, its main doctrinal positions and certainly the role of Ellen White. But there was uh, an ambivalence by many people, some of them in, in positions of authority about about putting out raw Ellen White material. I just believe that's what's the... the You're saying I came on the scene at the wrong time. No, not the wrong time, but that's what was causing your problems. There's no wrong time for distributing this material. Okay. Uh, but I think that because the, the, the story with the Adventist Church was, as you know, people were, were, were very embarrassed uh, even before the ad appeared at, at some of the, uh, the billboards and the concept. The billboards so, came after. Okay, well, the billboards embarrassed them. And, and perhaps, I don't know if you would say so, but I, I, I think they might have been a little sharp edged. They were not erroneous, but they could have been polarizing. And, and you know, Ellen White did say to A.T. Jones, the uh, uh, first religious liberty leader and, and editor of our first uh, religious liberty journal, she told him a number of times to avoid sharp cutting attacks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, the real trick is when does the sharp uh, attack begin or, or end and, 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 and when is uh, proclaiming truth relevant? We're going and she to... says about the, the reformers that, you know, the, 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 they tried to hold back and then when, it, when, when the storm descended, they felt, or, or came on them, they felt that maybe they'd brought it on themselves. So this is part of the dynamic here, but okay. we need to be careful. I clearly. agree. I've, uh, the billboard, by the way, the one billboard we put up in Central Florida um, asked a question. I started yeah, with is this man the Antichrist? No, like that. I never put up a board calling the Pope the Antichrist. Never did. Yeah. But Other there was one like did. that at that same time. I, I never did. Yeah. You know, but what has happened to the church, I think, because they knew of my penchant for advertising and wanting to use the media to get the message across, they just assumed David Mould must be involved yeah. in this. I was yeah. not. Yeah. Our board, I paid, I got the best picture of the Pope that money could buy. Mm -hmm. Paid quite a bit for it. Put it up on a billboard that asked the question, why is the Vatican trying to change our Constitution? Yeah, I remember that one. That's all it said. There was, no, there was no caricature of the Pope. But that's not where I'd like to go right now. That, was, that came later. I'd still like to go back to the six pages. What we did, we designed a six page ad in Time Magazine, uh, submitted it to them. It of course had to go past their legal department. They wanted to read the book. Mm. So I had to submit great controversy to their lawyers. They wanted $850,000 to run the ad. I didn't have the first dime. But I said, Lord, let's set out by faith here and see what we can accomplish. Here's the ad, six pages. The first page was a portrait of Sister White. I commissioned that painting. Uh, it's an interesting story and I'll tell you about it. I wanted a, a portrait of Sister White and my sound engineer in Orlando kept on telling me to find a particular artist. And I, I got tired of him nagging me, and so I went. And I had a little etching of Sister White, and I found this gentleman. He worked at a, an outdoor company called Peterson Outdoor, outdoor advertising. And so I show up with this little thing of Sister White, and I said, you've been recommended as an artist. Could you, do you think you could paint this? You know what the man turned to me and said? Ah, oh, Sister White. 
he was a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm. Uh, it turns out he had painted a picture of President Reagan when Orlando was welcoming Reagan. Massive sign over the I-4. And Reagan fell in love with it and had his agents buy it, lock, stock, and barrel, and it hung in the Smithsonian. Because only that, a president could fall in love with their own picture. Well, he, he <laughs> did. I couldn't resist that. But my point, if he was good enough for President Reagan, yeah, he no. was good enough no, this for is me. A, this is as good a, a, a representation of Ellen White. And this, as you know, there's very few actual uh, photographs or pictures of her, so it's hard to know what to go about. All right. But, we focused, now, you did a good job. I think it's a, a, it was well thought out. We focused on Sister White. Here, we went into health some of the statements she had to say about health, the year she said it, and the year science finally caught up. Our center spread had to do with the church raping the Constitution, and I wanted to find a tactful way of saying rape. And this is what we came up with. Blood was flowing, but the church steeple was doing the work, you know, tearing up the, the Constitution and so forth. And we finished it off with two pages on religious liberty, what Falwell and Rehnquist and the others were saying, even what Paul Harvey had to say about Sister White. Uh, interestingly enough, we sent out about 100,000 of these to Adventists across the country, and donations started to come in. And in the midst of this, we got a call. You know, a gentleman said, I've just sold a toy, and I'd like to donate some of the proceeds to the Lord's work. And I, of course, was curious. I said, what kind of a toy? He said, a helicopter. Mm. He said, I'll give you $300,000. He said, no, in fact, I'll give you 150000 and I'll loan you 150000 And obviously, he meant as the book sold, we could pay him back his 150000 But that was $300,000 going towards that bill. Time magazine wanted $850,000. Mm. But then in the next sentence, he said, but don't you think you've given a bit too much prominence to Sister White? And he said he never meant it that way, Lincoln, but I felt that, you know, wealth has its privileges. There's a certain deference, I think, that people with means expect from others. But there were $300,000 dangling in front of my nose. And he said, won't you pray about it? And in an instant, I said, no, I'm not going to pray about it because I have no intention of changing it. I think it sent him into shock that I wouldn't even take it to the Lord in prayer. But at that moment, I felt I was being bribed. He may not have intended it that way, but I felt he was throwing his money around. In effect, I was saying to him, go buy another ministry. Because well, I, don't, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if you would say, if you had it to do over again, you'd do it exactly the same. I would. You would? I would. Not, in a, not for a moment would I drop on my knees and talk to the Lord about it. And I desperately need funds because we have another ad that we're coming out Remember, with. Remember... Uh, How in the world could I, have, could I have yielded to that? Well, Daniel asked for a little time to think things I over. I didn't need any time. Friends. It, I didn't need any time. To, to yield would have been to, to kiss up to him for money. And I'm just not wired that way. Mm. I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Well... And then the church reacted. I mean, we started catching hell. The church It was all went unfortunate, and, and you know the whole story, and I know part of it. And, but and our audience doesn't, and that's why I'm recounting it, because we have a new yeah. ad today, and that's why I'm putting, this one in, to, it, putting it in context. To keep in mind that you had church opposition at the time, but it was not uh, everybody in the church. It was not uh, any official action of the church. It was a few people in key positions at the time. Your no predecessor, like, predecessor Hegstead, was one of them. Uh, yes. He uh, fielded calls. Yeah. People were excited. You want me to tell you something, Lincoln? I, I went overseas. I went to Jamaica. My treasurer calls and says, you've got to get back here. I said, why? He said, every line, we had 10 lines. Every line is ringing off the hook from Seventh-day yeah. Adventists pledging money to put this ad in Time magazine. I hurriedly got back here, and by the time I got back, little did I know that the folk were so excited, they were contacting us, but they were also contacting the GC. And Hegstead got in on the act. Owen Troy got in on the act. And who knows who else was, was you know. And they put out a statement saying that Time magazine assured them the ad wouldn't run. Well. 
I don't want to name names, but obviously it, it, it's a no-brainer that, it, that it's against the principles of, of religious freedom, the biblical principles, and it's clearly against the Constitution for, for uh, uh, individuals or a church itself to try to stop someone's private uh, expression of faith. Even if you were wrong, they, can, they shouldn't be able to stop you. They, they have a right, if you work for the church, to uh, take action against you as an employee. But uh, I, I think this was misbegotten to, uh, to try to use uh, pressure uh, for time to stop this. You know and, uh, and as you well know, and you recounted it, there were many within the church that, that, that sympathized with you, not because they probably knew you all that well, but any Adventist that understands great controversy knows that this is a message for this time Absolutely. and knows Ellen White's words that it needs to be distributed. At the time, Lincoln, when, when Falwell and Pat Robertson, and when they were making these claims about the church taking over, you weren't at Liberty Magazine then. You were back at Pacific Press. But did you have any sense of apprehension about what they were saying and what their ultimate aim was in the light of what we know is coming? Well, I don't know what their ultimate aim, but like I say, that was a time, even within the church, you know, it says where every wind of doctrine is blowing. I know, and, and you it's mentioned more so this. now. There, there are clearly people. I've got to be careful because I, I, I grown up in the church and I work in the church. And I know what Ellen White says, the ship will go through. And, and there's no evidence that our church has formally repudiated any uh, major issue or you know, any mm -hmm. uh, significant uh, plank of what we hold. But then, as even now, there are individuals, in, in sometimes in quite key positions, who have very contrary view on some of our basic Adventist particulars. You've got to face it. Uh, it's, it, it, on the broadest outlines, there are, there are those who sort of have a higher critical, uh, uh, all-knowing, cynical, secular view of what we believe. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to say it publicly, but, you know, Ellen White, nudge, nudge, and, you know, we you know, really go to the, to the wall for any of this stuff. They're always going to be there. The, the Bible is quite plain. Ellen White says that even through the time of trouble, we'll have these, these people inside who are just sticking with it, but yet they, they're not of us. And, and, and you see evidence of some of them. Uh, uh, what can you do? There were a couple of people, and I won't name them, who, who uh, f for a number of reasons, probably philosophically, uh, theologically, they, they had it in for you. But you know, I remember they were t saying things that, in fact, when they called me at, at uh, Pacific Press, made all sorts of statements. They said, can you prove any of this? I said, you, you, you could be sued for some of the things you've said. So they, they were very, Some of the things they were saying about me. Yeah. They're very serious, and I'm sure there's people say things about me that are equally outrageous. But it shouldn't, they shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. Well, they uh, did, because uh, they killed well, that campaign. Yes. Stop payment after stop payment after stop payment yeah. got put on, 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 we ha uh, on checks. Uh, we were in line. We Remember, had done our homework. Remember, it's not over until it's over. And, and it isn't no, over there's yet. There's no fat lady in this story. But <laughs> All right. But the story's not finished till the end, and, and, and I think... Uh, I love that. The, the, the <laughs> It's building, and, and you're still uh, determined to do this, and, and others uh, through different projects are, are, are promoting great controversy. Lincoln, it's been 20 years, 20 years since they slit my throat with my blood running down the road. 20 wow. years.